Hello, I'm Robert James, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the work we've been doing in the Quince High Resolution Microbiomics Group about long read metagenomic sequencing and assembly using Nano MDBG. So, a little bit of background about the work that we do. Um, firstly, we try and construct new bioinformatic tools to help facilitate high resolution microbiomic studies on a range of complex communities. And these uh, tools include things like Concot, Strong, and also Meta MDBG, a new lightweight assembler, which I'll be talking about in the latter half of this talk. And then really my ball game is to help develop the new novel molecular methods to help resolve these community dynamics from these complex metagenomic samples. And this includes things like long read metagenomic uh, whole genome shotgun sequencing, multi-contact HiC, and even moving into long read uh, metatranscriptomics of bacterial communities. Then we enter integrate these uh, approaches to answer these novel um, metagenomic questions uh, relating to bacterial ecology using a multi-omics based approach. So what we're effectively trying to do is take any sample type and understand what's in the sample, how much of it is in the sample, both in terms of relative and absolute abundance, and also what is the function of the sample using things like transcriptomics data. And this allows us to make sample to sub sample comparisons and answer really interesting questions about eco uh, bacterial ecology. Uh, what we're effectively trying to do is do what's been termed in the industry as tricorder science. So we work on a range of sample types uh, from low com lower complexity right the way through to high complexity. So on the left, we have the Shime anaerobic uh, culture system, which we can run for months on end, through to actual human and uh, murine fecal samples, and then up to the highest uh, complexity in terms of like soil samples and even the root rhizosphere uh, microbiome as well. So what we're trying to do is to take these macroecological concepts and really apply them to the microbial world in the sort of metagenomic context. And so in the future, we see things like uh, using understanding the human gut microbiome and clinical samples to understand treatment and response diagnostics uh, and dynamics, and even look at pathogen detection in complex and also nominally sterile environments. This is not a huge leap forward to end up working in things like personalized medical care and even complex diagnostics of things like IBD and Crohn's disease. Then moving into the, into the environment, we start working on things like the soil microbiome and wastewater, where we're trying to understand uh, and track things like host-specific antimicrobial resistance genes and their threat to the human population, as well as think, looking at things like the mobilome in terms of the plasmic, uh, plasmid and phage dynamics. This is not such a huge leap to end up in things like environmental monitoring and even areas such as the bioprospecting in industry. I mean, is it too hard to imagine the next cure to disease X being a antimicrobial resistance as part of a biosynthetic gene cluster in the fungal component of your soil sample. This is actually something we're beginning to look at uh, in terms of uncultured Antarctic soil bacteria and understanding their biosynthetic potential. So it's a very exciting time to be involved in metagenomics, but just to give you a bit of background about where we've come from and where we are, I thought I'd talk a little bit about Illumina 150 base pair metagenomic whole gen genome sock shotgun sequencing. We would originally start doing what is uh, termed as a read-based analysis, where we would take a database approach and try and understand what's in a community, but this was at a high degree of sensitivity. You kind of lose your specificity because of the short reads. So the next um, logical step was to move into metagenomic assembly, where we'd start to get more contiguous sequences to gain an understanding of the genes of interest and their, both their genetic and taxonomic context. Then when the advent of long read metagenomic sequencing came along, the contigs got longer, and the, the resolution got higher, and the assembly graphs got better. And this was allowing people to start looking to strain level variation within samples, as well as then moving on to things like de novo assembled metagenomic assembled genomes or MAGs. Uh, and then into the sort of newer assemblers, we're starting to find things like this circularized MAGs from both single sample and co-assembly strategies in terms of the big data approach. So what we're trying to do is move from something like this on the left, which is a highly complex assembly graph of the human gut microbiome from a short read data set, through to something like this, where you can start to see the resolution and of your metagenome assembled genomes into single circular contexts. However, there are a number of challenging challenges and considerations that we had to deal with along the way. Firstly, being the long read metagenomic library construction from a range of challenging uh, and complex matrices, and then actually pro uh, providing a computationally realistic assembly tool for long read data. Um, other factors such as sequencing depth and cost and single molecule accuracy were somewhat out of our control, but have progressed rapidly along uh, with the development of the platforms themselves. 
So from a long read metagenomic library construction perspective, what were we requiring? We, we need long fragments of DNA to take advantage of the platform capabilities. And this required an improved method of sample storage and extraction. Uh, alongside this, it needed a simplified workflow for consistency to allow sample to sample comparisons. But we also wanted to try and avoid using long uh, short read uh, depletion techniques such as PEG or PVP precipitation. Um, whilst we still use the long fragment buffer or the dilute spry cleanup from uh, on different platforms, um, we try we, we avoid any sort of uh, very severe short read elimination. However, it is important to note that all long read sequencing platforms have a sensitivity to short read contamination. So what we we're effectively trying to do is to move something move from something like this, which is a generic uh, soil sample, which has been uh, lies through ribolysis. So you have your shearing of your DNA through to something like this, which is also actually been ribolysed. It's a soil sample. So it's been uh, mechanically uh, lysed, uh, but we still managed to retain a really nice tight shear pattern uh, with minimal short read contamination. And this is actually a, a published protocol up on protocols.io, which we used for the development of Meta MTBG. So how do these uh, perform on a sequencing device? So here we've got one of our best runs, actually. It's a UK soil sample. We pulled 216 gigs off of it, um, off of a single promethon flow cell, ran it for 96 hours uh, using LSK114 and the Q Q20 chemistry using the E8.2.1 adapter. And then actually we base called everything with the V5 uh, SUP transformer model. Now, whilst this is our best run, uh, all of the runs that we've actually done on, on the Promethine flow cells from these extraction techniques are all north of 150 gigs. Um, but so, so it's a repeatable, uh, uh, it's a repeatable uh, result. So here's some of the other uh, uh, estimates of throughput that we've got from a range of different samples across a range of different sequencing platforms. Um, whilst we initially started designing some of these protocols on anaerobic digester samples, um, for the development of these assemblers, we actually used paired samples of human fecal samples and paired UK soil samples so that we could run a comparative uh, analysis on different platforms. And one of the things to take note on this slide is that the uh, throughput of a promethine flow cell is far greater than the throughput of a, a BioRevio smart cell, even with the SPRQ chemistry. Everything's got a nice uh, N50 of between 8 to 10 KB, which is very important for assembly through areas of genetic homology. However, when you look at the, the graph on the left, uh, you can see that the short reads um, uh, depletion using the long fragment buffer is not quite as vicious as the dilute spry cleanup for the HiFi uh, library on the right hand side. So you're still retaining some of those um, shorter fragments and extra chromosomal elements. In terms of single molecular accuracy, uh, both feces and soil are, are shown to actually still have a modal Q accuracy, a Q score of over Q20. Uh, actually, it's, it's just over Q24 for both uh, both sample types in this uh, these runs. Um, and so we can really see the, the advancement of, of single base pair accuracy uh, over the last few years even. So in terms of actually your computationally realistic assembly of long read metagenomic data, this is quite important because what you don't want to be doing is spending 95% of your budget on Amazon Web Server time. However, the challenges to long read uh, assembly, metagenomic assembly, is firstly repeats within genomes and then repeats between genomes. So areas of shared genetic homology really do confuse assemblers. Um, alongside uh, things like strain diversity, which again, you have those, those conserved regions. Um, but the idea of the long read sequencing is to actually extend either through these repeats uh, or areas of shared genetic homology to be able to give some sort of anchor point for the assembly to to uh, make it through these uh, areas, things like the 16S gene, for example. Another issue is actually dealing with low abundance, leading to uneven coverage in your assembly uh, pipelines, and then really data, data set size. So you need the... Uh, you need the assemblers to be able to scale well with um, your data set size. And just as an example of, of strain level uh, complexity, here we have a, a, an assembly plot of six Lactococcus lactis strains, um, which is a very complex assembly graph, and they all sort of end up going through areas like the 16S. So there are two main approaches towards doing um, assembly-based metagenomics. One is using a string graph approach, and the other is using a De Bruyne graph approach. Now, De Bruyne graphs decompose reads into k-mers, and where you have your nodes as your fixed length k-mer overlaps, and your edges are your reads, and your repeats end up being represented as bubbles, which can either be simplified or popped. String graphs uh, use nodes as reads, and your edges are your overlaps, 
However, in this case, the repeats can actually be resolved if they're longer than the individual reads because it's a, a string graph approach. However, both approaches do not scale alone well with database uh, data set size. So Gaton came along and had the idea to try and combine uh, some approaches to understand uh, how minimizer space to bring graphs can actually scale well with long read large data sets. And actually here, it was originally designed for PacBio data sets and he was able to assemble um, the same data sets uh, across a number of different uh, state-of-the-art assemblers, um, but with a much, much lower memory footprint using Meta MDBG, to the point where he was actually doing the assemblies on his laptop, uh, while still managing to retain a higher recovery of near-complete circular contigs and non-circular, uh, near-complete non-circular mags, as well as high-quality and medium-quality mags relative to the next uh, best state-of-the-art assemblers. And you can have a read about that on uh, Nature Biotech. So. Nanopore got hold of the uh, Meta MDGB and started applying it to their own data sets and it was actually uh, behaving and, and uh, performing very well. However, Gaton decided that he would actually produce his own uh, bespoke version for uh, Nanopore, um, which uh, involves a preliminary read correction, uh, error correction step uh, to uh, increase its performance. And it does, it outperforms uh, Meta MDBG on the uh, Nanopore data set. Here you've got more complete high quality mags uh, than the Meta MDGB and the nearest state of the art assembler Metafly. Some of the other assemblers that we were using on this wouldn't actually scale to these database sizes. Um, so to make this comparison, we, we run the, the data sets that we've been creating uh, specifically for this. And currently this is out as a preprint on the archive. So we were able to produce phylogenetic trees uh, from the ONT soil data and to show how the different assemblers were able to recover different um, taxonomic groupings such as genus, families and orders, etc. Showing that Nano MDBG actually outperforms Meta MDGB and Metafly um, in terms of the recovery uh, rate of the taxa. And Nanopore actually managed to get hold of this and uh, use both our um, DNA extraction and library prep uh, uh, protocols, as well as the nano MDBG on eight flow cells, uh, getting a mean um, throughput of over uh, over 185 gigs per flow cell. And they were managed to recover over five and a half thousand medium to high quality mags uh, from a total of 1.47 terabases of sequencing data. They were also able to identify a, a large number of AMR, AMR loci, as well as a number of uh, hundreds and hundreds of biosynthetic gene clusters uh, that they were able to characterize. However, what they were not able to do was to be able to show a gig by gig bake-off between PacBio and Nanopore, which is exactly what we did. And what this shows is actually there is a, quite a high degree of parity between Nanopore and PacBio. But it is important to note that Nanopore, uh, you get a lot more data back per flow cell than, per, than um, PacBio. So on a cost per gig basis, uh, Nanopore is actually more efficient. Now, Gaton actually used a number of different uh, error correcting steps as well uh, in this process. It was able to show that um, these uh, particular error corrections were increased the recovery of uh, near complete contigs um, relative to uh, the other assemblers. So in summary, I'd like to state that the, uh, we think that long reads uh, really provide a step change uh, in our potential understanding of microbial communities. Um, whilst this is a very rapidly advancing field, um, the fast and efficient assembly of metagen genomes is actually possible now. Um, but I would like to point out that there is continued development that Gaton is doing on nano MDBG, uh, to, and he has actually fixed uh, issues such as premature circularization and also a, a different, differential between minimizer space and base space sequence convergence, leading to areas of no coverage. Um, but not just uh, our group, the, um, the wider community, is also rapidly developing large-scale automated assembly approaches specifically for Nanopore. One of particular note is Miloasm, which is a string graph approach by Jim Shaw and Heng Lee, and it's a really nice piece of work. Um, what people are suggesting we go to next is something like uh, a development of some of these QC tools and curation tools for these mags, which have been created through large automated assembly processes. And I'd like to leave you with this final thought. Whilst Nanopore has always said that they like to provide a platform where anyone can sequence anything anywhere. I think what we're trying to achieve is to provide a stable platform where everyone can sequence everything everywhere. Thank you very much.